So in physical therapy, um, it, it'll really be dependent on the type of patient I'm working with and how I model and, and kind of really imagine their body as a free body diagram. Um, if I'm working with a patient with Parkinson's, um, their center of mass is going to be just around the navel um, and, and how they're able to control that. Now that individual is going to place their head forward, which is obviously going to shift the position of their center of mass. Um, and then that will obviously change how I draw my free body diagram and how the forces interact with their center of mass. Another easy example is, is the pelvis. A lot of runners will have a, a lot of pain to the outside of their knee. And this can be caused for a lot of different reasons. One of the reasons is, is that their hip muscle isn't strong enough to control the placement of their knee as they impact the ground. Now, if we look at the free body diagram of the pelvis, we have a triangular shape for the pelvis. Our hip comes out kind of at a, an angle here, and then there's a muscle coming off to the side. Now, this muscle is called gluteus medius. Um, and it is one of the more important gluteal muscles um, because it does allow the person to control the placement um, as well as the deceleration of their center of mass. And so we know that our center of mass is somewhere around the navel here. And as that individual lands, we know that there's a large uh, impact force at the foot, but as well as that um, gravitational pull of their body as they're coming towards the ground. So we have our free body diagram would have the force of the individual's body weight plus whatever acceleration um, that they have during their either gait or while running. Um, to make it easier, we can do during gait, so it'll just be their body weight. Um, and then that'll create a torque at the actual hip joint, so where the femur inserts on your pelvis. Now that torque is going to have to be counteracted by this um, gluteus medius muscle. And so we can easily figure out um, and estimate an individual's body weight. Um, and based on x-rays and, and other studies that are out there, we can find the estimated distance um, that the gluteal muscle inserts from the hip joint and thus allow us to calculate the torque um, that that muscle has to create, um, the force that that muscle has to create to counteract the torque of the um, individual's body weight. The body um, obviously has a lot of different joints, um, and those joints can be looked at in an individual manner as well as in a global manner. And so we can take the free body diagram concept and apply that um, to a specific joint if you're uh, more of a specific orthopedic physical therapist, um, whereas if you're a, a neurological therapist, you may use your uh, free body diagram concept at a more global level looking at the whole body. Understanding free body diagrams and that concept, um, we may, may not draw it on every patient. Um, uh, however, I have used them to educate patients, actually. Um, so, but understanding and looking at an individual and seeing how you move and where your center of mass is and how that's going to create a torque, let's say, on, you know, on, on the hip muscle and how that can influence the knee position, um, everything is really obviously connected um, and it can influence significant things based on how your center of mass and the forces that act upon that center of mass um, influence your free body diagram.